paying attention. What's that sports show on in the morning? Yeah, we're the only ones locally on in the morning. And if you're listening for the very first time, whenever it's 6.15, 6.19, 6.20 in the morning, Ron Wolfley goes back in his brain, looks at all players on the field, and decides the ones that were so extraordinary that they don't just get a little ball for their keepsake. They Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A little more. <clears throat> Welcome to the Morning Glory. My, my glory. my name is Eddie Law, and I can't talk this morning, apparently. Hmm. Um, what a weekend. Uh, it was a uh, sports weekend. That's usually how, how, I, how, I, uh, how I measure my weekends, especially during football season, is, is how good the sports were. And uh, you couldn't have asked for anything more this weekend. Obviously, uh, Saturday night, uh, my Cardinals beat the Packers in overtime in probably the wildest game I've ever seen. Um... I'm sure there's another one that's wilder probably, but that was wild. A last second pass from Aaron Rodgers to Janice for to, you know, to send it to overtime and then uh, the Cardinals, Larry Fitzgerald catches the pass and runs right into defenders only to basically sidestep him and, and, and take it right to the five yard line and then gets a little shovel pass at the very end and t- score the game winning touchdown. Just You couldn't ask for anything more. Ridiculous, ridiculous game. Uh, yesterday, I was the Seahawks at Carolina Panthers. Panthers put the hurting on the Seahawks, and you know Seahawks made a huge comeback at the end, but they just didn't have enough to uh, win that game. And uh, I don't care because fuck Seattle. And of course, last night, uh, you know Denver Pittsburgh battle of the well, Ben you know Ben Roethlisberger is hurt, and uh, Peyton Manning is uh, noodle arm. He's old. So um, other than that, Invicta FC on, on Saturday night. Uh, it, it, it was weird. It was, it was it was a decent event. It was, it was all right. It was all right from what I saw. And then the main event, Cyborg knocks a chick out. Almost, almost a one hitter quitter. It ended up being a TKO, but but uh, almost a one hitter quitter with that right hand. Chick's head spun like fifteen times, and then she dropped. I thought she was doing okay against Cyborg. You know, she uh, was able to take Cyborg down a couple of things once or twice. Was able to uh, to uh, to pressure Cyborg onto the cage, but Cyborg landed some. Just monster mean girl knees, man. That was uh, that was just awful. Like it just, I, I, it, no matter who it is that's fighting, you always see you know whenever Cyborg lands a knee on anybody like that, you just like, dude, that damn. And the chick she's fighting probably, you know, they they both weighed in at 145, but Cyborg ballooned up. There's a video of it too, of the of the scale about like six hours later, whatever it is. She's like 20 pounds heavier than she did when she weighed in. It's like, yo the hell so and then the Russian chick probably was weighed like maybe like 160 something maybe 170 when they were fighting uh so you know the weight cut the, the, the weight difference definitely makes it makes a difference or the weight yeah difference makes it makes it a big deal it's a big deal at the actual fight right once the fighters are, are hydrating to get all that weight back especially for a girl like Cyborg she gets a whole lot of power back um when she you know when she hydrates again so you know um not gonna lie, I'm not gonna say it's a, it's a huge, it's a huge win for Cyborg. No, she's just fighting tomato cans. There's nobody at 145, and she's not gonna drop to 135. I mean, that's over, right? The payday there is go, is gone. People can can uh, make the argument, oh, it's a, the Holly Holm fight. No, not really anyone cares about that yet. You know I mean, if Holly Holm goes on like a ridiculous streak, um, you know, wins quite a few fights here or there, it uh, you know you could you could make an argument, but um, when Ronda lost, you know, Cyborg lost her payday. And that's kind of it. Now we have, you know, Holly Holm against Misha Tate. And I think, can you say that you really give a shit? Like, like, really, really are looking forward to, holy shit, I can't wait to see this fight. Because I don't, I can't see it yet. You know? I, I, maybe, maybe, maybe the way that if, if Misha Tate starts saying stuff or, 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 or we see something different, that'll change. But right now, that card where Holly Holm and Misha Tate on it is the Conor McGregor show. So. Uh, if anything, I'm happy for 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 the for for the fighters on that card because they're all gonna get paid mad money for that card. It's just how the McGregor show goes. It's so weird. Anyway, last night's fights, a uh, lot of lot of takeaways out of that one. Actually, it was a pretty good card for being free. A lot of people had had a had a hard, especially in the East Coasters, had a really hard time staying awake for it. Um, Sundays are like usually my chill out day, and uh, I usually somehow like naturally like pass out pretty early. So I was having trouble, stay, you know, staying awake uh, up until the um, the Mitrione Travis Brown fight. And honestly, it woke me up because I was pissed off. That was some bullshit. Fucking um, how how you can poke a guy's eyes twice and not get anything? 
is incredible. Um, like no warning, no 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 point taken away, nothing. You know. And uh, Travis Brown won that fight because he poked the shit out of Mitrione's eye. I thought Mitrione was doing all right against Travis. I thought he was doing actually pretty good against them. And I, I thought for sure we we're going to see some kind of overhand coming and, 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 and Travis Brown screw up. Mind you, the body kicks were there. Travis Brown was attacking Mitrione's body with those leg kicks. With, with the, sorry, with the, with the, with the, mid, the, the body kicks. And that was a motherfucker. Those things hurt, for sure hurt like a bitch. Um, and then, you know, they shoved his thumb into Mitrione's eye. And everyone saw the pictures. I'm sure you've all seen the pictures on Twitter. Not, just look it up. Um, Mitrione's eyeball is like fucking... Gall, no, not even golf, it's like baseball sized in his eye. Like his eye is swollen to shit from the from the uh, from the poke. I mean his thumb went into his eye. It was ridiculous. Um and it was the second time he did it. The first time was a pinky, you know, and so it, it was it was just stupid. I really can't believe that, that Travis Brown didn't get a point taken away or something. You know, and Matt Mitrion was supposedly on the on the scorecards was winning that fight. Okay? So uh, you know, people are going to be like, oh, it wasn't on purpose. No, when you stick your hand out like that, with your hands, with your fingers extending and shit, it might not be on purpose, but you know what could happen. You know what I mean? You know that for sure you could poke this dude's eyes and, and, and get an advantage that way. So then that happened, and then Travis Brown gets his ridiculous, you know, Daniel Cormier style take uh, takedown, you know, and um, winner by eye poke. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was saying, Daniela, for sure. I was like, oh yeah, that's great. Travis Brown, winner by eye poke. That's perfect. Douche. Like, I just, that, that Travis, and then, honestly, people are going to hate Travis Brown more because of it. Because it looks, it, to me, it looks so damn intentional. Like, you know what I mean? It looked just so intentional. You don't, you don't stick your hand out with your thumb out like that without knowing that it could happen. You know what I mean? And, and, and it was, and it was crazy because he poked him. Travis Brown could easily see that he, that he shoved his thumb in his eye. And he kept going after Mitrion, and Mitrion like covered his eye, tried to like, he backed away, covering it for a second, saw that the ref wasn't pausing the fight, and he's like, shit, I better fight or I'm gonna get my ass whooped. So he kept fighting. The doctor looked at his eye. Mitrion knows what was, you know, on the Mitrion a lot, lot on the line. A new contract possibly. It was his last fight in his contract. Um, a win obviously, win bonus, all that, uh, and a win over a big name or a big, and a highly ranked guy, and, and for you know. So Mitrion, of course, was going to go back in there and fight. So people saying, oh, oh, he was fine enough to fight. Bullshit. All right. Very few fighters are going are gonna, to are gonna be like, oh, no, it hurts too much. I can't, you know, I can't fight or I can't see. You know I mean, Mitrion was a bad motherfucker. He'll be, he, he was like, no, no, I can see. He lied his ass out, but he's like, I'm fine. I can fight. I'm fine. So went in there, ate a bunch of body kicks, ate a bunch of shots, uh, was clearly ineffective after his eyes swole up to, you know, freaking softball size. Uh, punk ass Travis Brown tried to go over there and, and, and shake his hand and hug him and shit like good fight and Mitrion kind of gave him like like, like he kind of gave him dap he just you know, put his fist out kind of fist bump and then walked you know made him walk or just you know looked away from him because it's bullshit you know what I mean again I, this whole eye poking thing that's going on in MMA and the refusal to do anything about it broken over the bone Jesus fucking Christ god damn it like the whole fight was fucked Mitrion should get we, oh man, I just—it just sucks to see your guy put everything on line, and then that happens to him, you know. So, yeah, that, who knows if he comes back or not? His contract's up. Maybe the Fertitas, you know, feel feel, uh, you know. Second eye poke should be a point for taking from here on out. Yeah, for sure. No, for sure, it should. And you saw the rest of the card. Every ref was like, "Hey, watch that! You know, close your hands. Close your hands." Yeah, I forget he was telling them to. He was telling to. Uh, that wasn't Pettis, it was, uh, fuck, I forgot he was saying, he was telling over and over again, close your hands, close your hands, make a, you no, know, it might have been before that, too, the Trinaldo, Trinaldo, I think he was telling Trinaldo a little bit, but, regardless, still bullshit, so that annoyed the fuck out of me, the co-main event came, Pettis versus Alvarez, and everybody is mad, I'm not, because I picked Alvarez to win, but, that's how you beat Anthony Pettis, you close the range, ha, <laughs> Joker's pissed, um, you close the, You don't let him get at range and get his attacks off. You don't let him get those kicks off. He he landed quite a few kicks on Al, Alvarez. Okay, that's why that fight went to split. But you have to pressure uh, Anthony Pettis. Put him under the cage. I mean, he did. Alvarez did what RDA did to a well, much lower degree. But Alvarez did what RDA did for the most part by pressuring Anthony, not letting him get into range, not letting him be comfortable. You know, and um, 
and, and Alvarez gets a split decision win. That's just what it is. So, uh, a lot of people are upset about it. I'm not. I thought it was great. Uh, you know, not the greatest fight that we expected. I expected a brawl. It wasn't really that much of a brawl, obviously. But uh, but I don't mind. I don't mind picking correctly. I say that much. Um, but uh, you got to think about what was next for Pettis, man. That's two in a row now. Uh, they're gonna have to give him somebody. Maybe, maybe a rematch with Benson Henderson. Um, maybe uh, Nate Diaz. That'd be legit. Nate Diaz against against Pettis. Alvarez did not do what what RDA did. He held Pettis two rounds. Yeah, but no, I'm talking about the pressure part of it. He was in in, in Pettis's face the entire time. RDA was in Pettis's face with strikes, mind you, with strikes and a lot of a lot more activity than Alvarez. But but Alvarez is a wrestler by nature. And RDA is not. So uh, you know he didn't do he as far as the pressure goes. Maybe you know obviously RDA didn't you know didn't uh, wrestle fuck uh, wrestle fuck Pettis the entire fight. Um, RDA didn't, but uh, you know Alvarez definitely did it for at least two rounds, like you said. I agree. So, uh, but still W. What are you gonna do? Uh, and now he now he wants a title a title fight and everything. Apparently Khabib Nurmagomedov wants Eddie Alvarez. I don't know about that. Alvarez always takes about talks about giving us a show. He even applauds his performance. The, the, you know what? He needs to stop doing that shit because for sure that was a game plan. You know, for sure the wrestling was a huge part of the game plan, if not the entire game plan. So no, there should be zero apology from Alvarez on that one. You know, just this is what it is. You know, and and maybe you know he 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 expected to be able to knock Pettis out. I didn't think he would knock Pettis out at all. I didn't think he, I, and I definitely didn't think he would TKO him. I thought for sure the entire time I thought Alvarez is gonna get a decision win. That's it. So. Um, and of course, the main event, our boy Dominic Cruz comes through, uh, gets his belt back that he never lost. Uh, we got at least three mentions of Pettis was gun shy though. I think so too, as well. I think so too. I think so as well because uh, he uh, he looked yeah he wouldn't pull the trigger. He wasn't doing anything flashy like he normally does. I think he lost all his confidence against RDA. RDA killed his confidence. So, uh, but yeah, Cruz man, Cruz looked amazing, and we didn't find out till after the after the fight. But he has, a, like a, he had a, a basically a, a partially torn, I guess. Uh, hold up, I gotta get fucking, I gotta move this fucking bitch in front of me. He's moving super slow. That's what pisses me off about people out here. They drive like five miles under. But he had, a, he had a foot, I think a, a tendon, yeah, a foot tendon. The uh, plantar fasciitis, plantar fasciitis, however you say that shit, on on, on his uh, foot was basically the, the 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 tendon that connects the heel to the rest of the foot, obviously, obviously, and. Um, it was injured before the fight, and he still moved as well as he did. Can you imagine had that foot injury not been an issue? What would have happened? I mean, it would have been even, even crazier. So, uh, TJ landed, a, you know, landed single shots. That's the, that's that to me that was the difference. Is TJ was was throwing single shots and he was landing single shots, but he didn't land many of them. Meanwhile, Cruz, Cruz would move, land, like I saw like a, like an eight punch combo at one point or an eight straight combo at one point. And uh, and it was just how it was gonna happen, dude. Rogan was being so biased in the calls early on. He was, he was. And here's the thing, I don't mind it. And people get upset about it a lot. But if the judges were listening to the broadcast, I agree. I would get pissed off too. I'd be like, what the fuck, Rogan? You're you gonna fuck this up. But they're not. They're watching the fight without without any headphones on or the broadcast not on. So you know, I get people are complaining about it, but what, you know, what are you gonna do? You know what I mean, and I get it. He was a little biased. You know, T, yeah, he, he, he's friends with TJ. He's friends with Dwayne, and it's just a human nature to kind of lean towards your friends. You know what I mean? And so he was saying TJ was landing shots when he was missing. Here's the thing, um, and and, and uh, I don't know the exact angle that he sits at, and I do know he has a monitor in front of him. But what you saw, there's a bunch of times TJ would throw, and Cruz would move his body or move his head. To where the punch would just barely, by like by like a centimeter, miss, but it looked like it landed, right? So, so I, I could see that happening. That that being one of the reasons he kept saying it was landing, or whatever. Um, who knows? To be honest with you, it's on a little tiny tangent here. Um, I think Rogan's sick of the shit, dude. I think Rogan's sick of people. Is gonna get real sick of people bitching about that though. He never called out the times when Cruz landed combos or clean, yeah, clean hits. Um, you're probably right too. Uh, I was, I was honestly, I, I was, I wasn't even listening. I, I had the, the, you know, the volume up and everything, and I was paying attention to the fight though. Man, someone had a Rogan crush. Has a Rogan crush? 
it's not really a Rogan crush, man. It's just I understand what he's like, like the the thing that, that's going on. You know, it, it's it's he's watching live action. It's going by really quickly, and his friend is fighting in the cage. You know what I mean? Um, I'll give you an example. I've, I, I, other guys that I've seen uh, that are friends with guys in, that, that are fighting, their friends that are fighting are small promotions, obviously. But they, the same thing happens. The, the, the commentary, you know, sounds pretty biased. So it's, just, it's like, I don't know. I guess it's a human nature thing. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if he just bails after his contract's over. It's probably sick as a bullshit for people. Uh, I would be too. And if I have fuck you money, please believe that I'm that I would just flip off everybody. Be like, all right, bitch, it's fine. Have fun. Um, somebody on on Twitter yesterday was telling me that they that their their uh, their theory is that Ariel Hawani would replace uh, Joe Rogan, and I'm like Ariel Hawani doesn't know what he's watching. By the way, has he ever said d- more like like more dumb shit than he did last night? I think Hawani might have broken a record for dumb shit said ever, just ever. Like oh, uh, when Dominic Cruz was sitting next to him, I was hoping he was gonna slap him in the face. But anyway, um, so yeah, the title fight, man, going down to split. Uh, why, why Brandon Schaub gets the same character TJ does? Then he starts clowning him when he dyes his hair. Yeah, hey, look, Brandon Schaub looks like a fucking clown. It was funny as shit. He looks awful with that haircut. Just awful. Jeez, he looks awful with that haircut. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, uh, uh, so yeah, just mad amount of combos. Every time, every time, uh, <laughs> every time, uh, I agree with you, Joker. Every time that, uh, um, that Cruz went in and moved around. He found a new angle with land six, seven punches and move out of the way. And it was amazing performance by Cruz. Amazing. And now, here's the cool part that, 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 that I like. Because I watched some of the post-fight. Um, just because I want to see what Cruz is going to say. Um, uh, yeah, but here's the thing about Ariel. He's, he's a wrestling guy. If he went to WWE, he'd be way better than if he did this. I mean... He's a storyline guy. He's not. He shouldn't be talking about people. Like when he was talking about uh, people that deserve title shots or don't deserve title shots, he needs to shut the fuck up. Plain and simple. Um, anyway, but uh, yeah, he I know he I know the whole Mitrion thing, and everyone should be standing for Mitrion. To be honest with you, that was fucked up. Um, but uh, you know, they're not going to. So, um, so again, uh, you know, Cruz after the fight, and look during the fight we saw him, and and, and, and Rogan didn't pick up on it, or he must not know about it. Even though Cruz apparently says it all the time, but he was saying, "Oh, Cruz just took a big breath there. He oh, he took a big breath there, and but he never slowed down ever. Cruz did not slow down a bit in that fight until until the last forty five seconds or so, last minute maybe. Um, and then Cruz explained uh, after the fight that that uh, that he was taking that he always takes deep breaths because that's his reset. He does it on purpose. Okay. Now I wonder if that was fucking with TJ a little bit. Like TJ might have been like, "Oh shit, he's tired," and then no, oh, he's not. Fuck. Fuck, you know. Uh, TJ was also loading up on his shots. He was sitting on his shots. So if you see, ever watch a, a like a boxing match, and you and you watch a guy that's known for punching hard, hard and heavy, he sits on his shots. It's almost like he sits down, gets as much power from the ground as possible through his legs, and throws strikes. TJ was doing that a hell of a whole lot. He ended up flat footed at some point in the fight, um, you know, trying to land that kind of shit. So uh, trying to do, trying to knock Cruz out. Basically, I think TJ knew he wasn't fast enough to catch him. I think TJ knew that shit. Maybe he has an injury that, that wouldn't let, allow him to move very fast. Maybe, you know, whatever. But uh, maybe he just, just can't catch Cruz. You know, it, it, look, plenty of guys can catch Cruz. You know, so it, it's just what, that, what it is with that. Um, I didn't think the fight was close. And I'm, uh, uh, at all, I'm surprised for people who think TJ won. Yeah, no, I, I didn't think it was close either. I thought it was pretty damn decisive. It should have been a unanimous decision. Cruz, I really do think so. Um, a lot of people disagree. Like, oh, so close. The fuck were you watching? Did you ever see TJ land shit? Like, he didn't land anything. Those heavy shots he was throwing, it, it would be swinging a miss. They were telegraphed like hell. Okay, uh, a guy's been training, been training head movement, and, you know, in Muay Thai or in boxing, could have dodged those things no problem for like two months, two three months training, could have dodged those shots. All right. TJ desperate chasing Cruz, dodging like yeah, yeah. TJ started chasing, and the chasing. Um, the chasing, the fact that DJ started chasing helped out Cruz a hell of a whole lot. Because all Cruz has to do is move and wait. And then as soon as TJ's in range, pop, 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 move, wait. Again, pop, 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 move, wait. It just, it was just, you know, TJ was coming to the wolves. It was crazy. Um, but so I'm, I'm, I'm seriously pumped that Cruz is back as champ. He deserves to be champ. He never lost his, his belt. 
he got stripped of it because he was hurt, whatever. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. D- Demetrius Johnson, well, he didn't say it. His coach is saying it. Uh, now, now, DJ did do a Twitch or whatever where he plays video games where people go watch him. Um, and I watched maybe like five minutes of it. Uh, and he was talking about uh, Cruz and Dillashaw and all that. But I didn't hear him say anything about wanting to fight him. But Matt Hume, his his coach, actually said that that uh, he wants DJ to move up and get that 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 win back. Uh, that it, I'm assuming is Matt Hume's attempt at getting DJ a, a big fight. You know what I mean? Where they can kind of call it a super fight. Uh, with, with with Cruz in there, you could sell that. You could sell that pretty well. I think it's a co-main event. I don't think that could. I don't think that could uh that could sell a you know like be a headliner or a main event on a on a pay per view card. But still, Cruz winning did make up for all the recent UFC upsets. Though, yep, yep, yeah. And here's the thing about about it. It's um again, if you're gonna lose your belt, unless you do something like Jones does, or unless you're like, I don't know. I guess it, it might have been justified to strip him because he was gone for so long. I don't know. It's it's a weird thing to do. I, I don't like. I wouldn't want to be the guy I said that decides whether we strip somebody or not because of injury. You know, um, but. Still, for him to get it back, it's it's, it's for, in the story, man. All these surgeries, all these years out, he fought one minute. Like he kept saying, "I fought one minute in four years." Is what he said over and over again. You know, to do to go through all that shit. You know, people doubt him because he's older or whatever. He's only thirty something. I think he's like early thirties. So, did you hear what Cruz answered when asked what was the best moment of his life? I did not. I did not. What he said, but uh. Again, man, for, for, for you know, Cruz is, is crazy. Now they're talking bullshit. I don't want to see him fight Faber. That's bullshit fight. I don't want to see Faber ever get in that title shot ever again. He said it when he realized he didn't need the belt. Ah. You know, a lot of guys fall in that trap. Uh, Anthony Pettis is, is one of those guys. Anthony Pettis is one of those guys, man. Anthony Pettis is one of those guys that... that that identified himself with the belt, with the champion. Oh, I'm a champ. I'm the champ. I'm the champ. Now that he doesn't have it. He's like, fuck, who am I? You know what I mean? And that'll fuck with a lot of guys. You wonder if it's messing with Ronda Rousey right now. You wonder if it's if it messes with Cain Velasquez. We'll find out. But you wonder if it messes with Cain Velasquez. You wonder if it messes with uh, who's it, who just got dethroned. Whatever. You know, you wonder if it messes with with former champs with the Aldo. You wonder if it's messing with the Aldo at all. If he's the one, if he and he's a champ for a long time. So, Ronda Rousey has a video saying she's coming back late this year for sure. Oh, I didn't see it. So, okay, well I'm gonna look for that. Um, it'd be nice if she was actually training and not fucking making movies all year. That'd be nice. But you know, uh, do what you do, Rousey. Um, so yeah, uh, and TJ again. Who knows if he, if he identified with being a champ or not. Uh, just had that being his identity, and uh, we'll find out. Home of the story again. Yeah, dude. If she doesn't train, if she doesn't improve at all, if he just does the same shit she's been doing, I don't see any reason home won't knock her out again, or at least beat her decision or something. So, um, so yeah. Now that everyone's talking this this favor, you know, dumbass Hawani. God, I really dislike this motherfucker. He's like, well, the fight to make is favor, right? Favor Cruz? No, fuck yourself. How many titles are you going to get favor? How many? Like, you got to hand it to favor. Fucking businessman to the end. He he might suck at the UFC to give him another fucking title shot. If I could fight anybody, I'd fight Hawani. Dude, get in line. <laughs> get in fucking line. I don't even hate the guy. He's just awful. Awful. You know what I mean? And, and you kind of just accept those things. That, that when someone's that bad and they're, they're just, you know, they're on top because they've been there for a long time. He's an example of somebody that is not skilled, not good. At what they do, but they've been there so long that everyone kind of takes it as authority, right? There's guys that are that are nowhere near. I uh, have a good one, Joker. Um, there's guys that are nowhere near that dude's t- uh, that dude's uh, uh, I guess spot, you know, or job or whatever pay grade. I don't even know what it gets paid, so don't, you know, don't quote me on that. But that are way better. That are way there. That are doing podcasts at home for fun and shit. That are way better than Hawani. And because Hawani was there for a long time, he gets he gets those spots. This is what it is. It's a fact of life. You know what I mean? Just like they say, it's not what you know, it's who you know, which is absolutely true. Um, if you were there first and you were there for a long time, and you were there at the beginning, that happens. And you just got to accept, you know, just accept it and move on, whatever. Just like I always say when people complain about Rogan's commentary, if you don't like it, mute the TV. If you don't like how one, you just don't watch your shit. And you know what I do? I don't watch your shit. That's what it is, you know? I'm sure he's a decent person, whatever, and, you know, do what he do. Uh, 
But, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to head out here. Uh, yeah, got to get to work. Um, how about them Cardinals, man? <laughs> Crazy. Uh, it's going to be a nice long week. Got two weeks from last Saturday for until Spartan Super Spartan. Spartan Super? Yeah, Spartan Super, whatever. I call it the Super Spartan, but the Spartan Super in Temecula, California. Um, I don't know. I think it might be full, so if you wanted to join, sorry. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm still trying to get one of my friends on the team, and uh, he might get screwed out of it, so hopefully he doesn't. I think uh, hopefully they'll, 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 they'll add him on our team. Um, what else is coming up? Spartan Sprint in Arizona, February 27th. What else do I have? Uh, might try to, I'm going to try to make that trip to Invicta 16. My girl Alexis fighting, and I, and I really want to see her fight again in person. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna try and go to that March 11th, um, and cover that. So I'll I'll, give, I'll keep you guys updated on that uh, tonight for the Spanish speakers in Cerrados and Jaula, and uh, I'm gonna try my best to squeeze in an episode of, of Breaking the Law with Eddie Law. Um, it's gonna be really hard to do because I have full day of shit to do today. I mean it's ridiculously packed. I got I mean I'm, I'm probably I probably shouldn't have done the show today because I probably needed the last 30 minutes I've been using, but uh, not a big deal. Fuck it. I, I like doing this shit, and I rather not get to work. Uh, right now anyway so it's all good um all right so you guys have a wonderful day um yeah and one day closer to death so make this shit count all right go cardinals let's get that let's get to the super bowl uh big big matchup against the panthers we ain't scared son we ain't scared see ya